Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the Epic 2 and what we're going to be doing in this video is remaking the firing valve. Now we're doing this because the original firing valve is best suited to FAC rifles. So what we're going to be doing is making a dedicated sub 12 pound valve and the main difference will be the smaller transfer port hole in the end. There will be one or two other minor changes but we'll get into those as we come across them. Before we get into that though I do have a big favour to ask. If you're able to, please head on over to Lord Christopher Patterson's Instagram page and wish him the very best of luck in the upcoming Armac challenge. He's shooting for Air Max arms and I really want to see him do well. I know he's been practicing an awful lot and he's also a really nice fella. So if you have an Instagram account, please head on over there and wish him the best of luck. Right then, on with the valve. The first thing we've done is chucked up a brass profile into the lathe and we started work on the external features. The first thing to do was to face the end then turn the OD down to just under 14mm. We're doing the turning with a button tool which produces a real nice finish in brass. With that done we can move on to the two o-ring grooves around the valve body. These are done using a grooving tool and the grooves need to be 1.7mm wide and about 2.5mm deep. So measuring across the OD that would work out to around 11.5mm. The first groove that you're seeing me cutting here is a permanent seal so this o-ring is always sealing against air whereas the second one is a non-permanent seal and this seal only sees air when the rifle is fired. But once the grooves are finished we can finish off the external features by just chamfering all the edges. With that done, the next thing we can do is start work on the internal features. And to begin with, we're taking out some waste material, just using a pilot drill, then coming back with an 11mm drill, drilling out all of the waste and establishing the valve seat. The valve seat is the piece that the valve seals against, so this needs to be a really good finish. To achieve this, we're turning the lathe nice and slowly and feeding nice and lightly with a sharp drill. I've found in brass that to get the best finish you do need a little bit of load on the tool. If you're taking very little material out, the finish that you get isn't the best. So we came through with a 6mm drill bit, then finished off the valve seat using an 11mm drill bit. And with that done, the next thing we can do is put an m 12 by one thread in the very end of the piece, and this will accept the adjuster for the valve. And to cut that, we're just using a tab. Starting off with a starter tap, then finishing it off with a bottoming tap. The thread itself needs to be around 10mm deep, and so far we've just been copying the profile from the original valve. The final thing to do in this setup is just test fit the valve adjuster, and the valve adjuster just allows us to adjust both valve return spring pressure, as well as valve travel. This little piece here acts as a blocker, so when the valve opens, the travel is limited by this piece and a buffer o-ring. With that done, we can move the part over to the mill and start work on the milled features. As you can see here, we've got the part set up in our spindexer, and this will be incredibly useful when we come to mill the slots in the side. First thing we're going to be doing, however, is drilling out the transfer port hole. To do this, we're just using a spotting drill, then coming through with a pilot drill, Next up we're coming through with an end mill just to make sure that the hole hasn't been pulled off centre as we are drilling straight into a pre-drilled hole and that's from the lathe operations. The last thing we can do is drill the transfer port out to 4.6mm. In my testing 4.6mm provides the most efficient hole for the Sub-12177 rifle. It's no coincidence that the hole size is just over the calibre and there's a really interesting article which I'll link in the description below which explains the process of this. So if you're interested in transfer port hole sizes and efficiency, that's well worth a read. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. With that done, however, the next job was to slot the pin location that you can see on the left of the transfer port hole Although unfortunately the footage that I took from doing that operation was lost somehow, but it was a nice simple job. The slot itself is 3mm wide and 3mm deep, so I just used a 2mm end mill to create the initial slot, then widened the slot half a millimetre each side till its final dimension. 
This slot here accepts a retaining pin, which fixes the valve into the block. But with that said, the next process is to melt a few slots in the valve body itself. There are three slots spaced equally throughout the piece, and we're going to be using the spindexer to cut these slots nice and accurately at 120 degrees apart. These slots here just allow air to enter the valve body from all directions, but again, we're just copying the original part in this aspect. With that done, there's pretty much all of the mill work complete. I'll give you a good look at the components so far. It obviously needs a good deburr, but you can take a good look over the component there. You can see the valve seat in the middle, and so far it's looking pretty good. The next thing to do was to move it back over to the lathe and finish out the internal features. The only thing that we needed to do in this setup was to drill and bore the throat for the valve. And this just connects the valve seat to the transfer bolt hole. This dimension here is the same as the original, which is 7.5 millimeters. I've done it this way in hopes of incentivizing the air to move back through the valve and assist in the closing process. That sounds way more complicated than it actually is, so when we get over to the bench, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But for now, we're just drilling the throat out, then boring it to its final size. Once that was done, the next thing I wanted to do was pre-drill the hole for the valve stem. Now, we're not going to be drilling it through from this side, but I did want to pre chamfer the hole, just so we didn't have to do it at a later date. So we're just coming through with a spot drill, then drilling through 3.1mm, around 2mm deep, and then finally finishing that off with a little chamfer. With that done, we can part the piece off and finish off the other side. This side we're going to be doing a little different from the original part and that's just simply because I don't have an M7 by one tap on hand. The hole itself is a little shallow to single point thread it as well, so we're doing this part a little differently. First of all though, we're facing the end, then drilling out the hole for the valve stem 3.1 millimeters. With that done, we can come through with a 6 millimeter end mill and bore the end out. This will accept both the valve cap as well as the valve stem seal. The original part is bored out to around 5.5mm and then tapped M7. However, we're boring it out to around 6.5mm and I'm going to be adding a small retention cap on the end. So on this one, it's just a plain hole. With that all done, that's pretty much the valve complete. So what I'm going to do now is just clean it up slightly, deburr everything, then we'll take it over to the bench, I'll share some initial results, and I'll show you how it goes together. Right then, and here we have the two valves side by side. This one is our new one, this one is the factory original. The major difference is the transfer port hole, as you can see here. This one is 7.5mm, this one is 46 The advantage for a smaller hole is that it delays the expansion of air so that more of it happens behind the pellet, pushing it out the end of the barrel, rather than being wasted inside the block area. A big hole is beneficial for the larger calibers and high power rifles. A smaller hole is beneficial for the smaller calibers and the sub 12 pound rifles. To go along with the smaller hole in the valve, I did also make up this little spacer piece here, which takes up the area inside the block. So the material which joins the transfer port with the valve is drilled out to 7.5mm in the block as well. So this little sleeve here just blocks that area off. So to fit it, all we do is install the valve into the block, then drop this in through the top of the block so that it sits on the valve itself. And then when the entire system is built up, the transfer port, which is this hole here, sits on top of that, and it just adjoins the three pieces. The other thing I'll show you is just the change in the cap. So as I said earlier, I didn't have an M7x1 tap on hand, so I had to do the cap very slightly different. We have a plain drilled or bored hole, and then this cap which goes on the end. The cap has a groove in it, and what this allows us to do is push this into place like so, and then secure that using a grub screw in this hole. This cap secures this valve stem seal, and the valve stem seal stops air from travelling through the hammer chamber when we fire the rifle. 
Now the thing you see here is the two valves. So this one at the top is the original, and then this one here is a replacement. There's no difference between the valves at the moment. However, in the near future, I will be drilling out the holes in the end to see what difference that makes into the efficiency of the rifle. The Epic 2 is a little different from most rifles in that it has this hole in the valve stem. When we fire the rifle, air is able to travel through the valve into the transfer port and push a pellet out the barrel, but it's also allowed to travel through this hole here, through this hole in the back of the valve, and then into this sealed off section here. This air helps push the valve forward after it's been fired. So in other words, this hole assists the valve in closing. The size of the hole in the back of the valve dictates how much air is able to move backwards. So in theory, the larger this hole is, the more closing force will be on the valve once we take a shot. Right then, to finish off the video, we'll just go over some initial testing from the new valve. Now to test the new valve, what I've been using is the segment gauges. These gauges here have an indicator on them to tell you how much air you're using per shot. So as you can see there, it's reading 0, zero at the moment because the air sunder is off the rifle. But I've been doing a number of shot strings, checking the gauge, and then adjusting things throughout the rifle until we get the most efficient point. From the factory rifle, the reading on the gauge was around 2.2 bar per shot. This means the pressure drop inside the cylinder was around 2.2 bar whenever we took a shot. With our new valve and a few adjustments, we've got that down to about 1.7 bar per shot. And that's taken our shot count from a 200 bar fill from around 40 to 50 shots per fill to 60 to 70 shots per fill. Again, this is a 300 bar fill rifle, so we could get more shots by simply filling it up more. But for the testing purposes, I've just been concentrated on 200 bar fill. Now there's still a lot more to get out of the new valve, I'm pretty sure we can get a few extra shots out of it by just having a play around with the different settings. But for now the current settings are 100 bar on the regulator pressure, a valve travel of around 1.2 millimeters, so that's the distance between the stop here and the o-ring, so 1.2 millimeters there, and then a hole size in the back of the valve of 1 millimeter. With that said though, I do have a lot more testing to do, and I'm sure we can get that even better. For now though guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video, so thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been interesting, and we'll see you in the next one.